I'd like to start with a quote from the United States Bishop's letter, uh, Strangers No Longer, because it says what we believe. Uh, quoting, from its founding to the present, the United States remains a nation of immigrants, grounded in the firm belief that newcomers offer new energy, hope, cultural diversity. End of quote. Now, we believe this and we experience it every day. So our uh, ministry also is deeply rooted in our faith, you know, starting way back with Moses, who reminded the Israelites to treat the stranger with respect and to have the same love for him as you do for yourself. And then also our baptismal call is to participate in the ministry of Jesus, who listened to and challenged the Samaritan woman, a foreigner, who forgave sinners and healed, uh, healed the lepers, outcasts of society. So he walked with the people on the margins, and uh, his ministry of presence and love really is our ministry. You know, shortly after Sister Kathleen uh, got the idea of founding the Literacy Center, she met uh, Berta Manzo, who also works with immigrants in the Aurora area. And uh, she saw the need to, and the opportunity to help immigrants achieve citizenship. And this, just as a natural um, outgrowth of our Ministry of Teaching English at the center, because reading, writing, and speaking English is a major requirement to become a citizen. So now I coordinate the citizenship program where we have four classes a week for men and women to teach them the material that they need you know, to pass the test. Uh, the people who come to our classes are permanent legal residents and they've lived here in the United States for five years, many for many more. But, you know, they're intelligent, they're talented, they're good people who just need someone to help support them and achieve their dreams of in this new country. Um, my former student, Afi, says, I thank God for bringing me here. And this is my country now, and I want to live here the rest of my life. And uh, just Saturday, Sonia, a former student, texts me saying, Sister Jane, I voted for the first time, and I feel so happy, and you know, exclamation mark after it. <laughs> you know, if you met some of our students, you would fall in love with them, just as I did. Really, it's a privilege to work with them because they have such courage and determination to succeed. And they also have deep gratitude that we're willing to help them. Now, let me tell you a few of the stories of some of the people. Uh, Afi, whom I just mentioned, is from West Africa. She came as a refugee, leaving behind her the dangerous situations in Africa and I might say a new husband of only three months. Her plan was to come and become a citizen and then apply for her husband to join her. Well, she is now a citizen, has had a baby boy and is still waiting four years now. Every time I inquire, she says, well, now the government wants another document. And yet she thanks God for bringing her family here safely. Um, Haider and his wife are from Iraq. Now, he was a translator for our military during the war, but when our troops pulled back, his life was threatened. So he immediately applied to come to the United States as a refugee. Uh, however, the U.S. vetting process is so complicated and it took so long that at one point, he had to escape to southern Iraq just to save his life. Well, finally, he did get to the United States. And in spite of all this, he wants to become a citizen. Now, Ruben is from Mexico. He works third shift. That is from 11 p.m. at night to 7 a.m. in the morning. Then he comes to my class at 9.30 
without sleep, tired, but determined to study and become a citizen. I want to vote, he says. <laughs> and his story is typical of so many of our, of our students. Uh, several months ago, I was shopping in the NARS and I heard, teacher, teacher. So I turned and I saw Salvador with a big smile on his face. And he was with his wife and two sons. And he said to me, remember, I passed my test. And he says, and now I have my wife and my two sons with me here in the United States. It was a joy <laughs> to see his joy and his pride. Uh, one last story. <laughs> Rosalina just passed her test in October. She had a date in March, but <laughs> you know what happened in March? The COVID hit and everything was shut down, including our own classes. She was really disappointed because she was ready and she says, I wanna go now and get it over with. But she couldn't take the test. Plus she and her husband both got the COVID uh, virus. Uh, but now, seven months later, <laughs> she did go to Chicago. She passed her test, returned for the oath ceremony and last week went to vote. So, so we have many wonderful success stories like this. Um, now, you know, Thanksgiving is coming in a few months, in a few weeks, I mean, <laughs> time flies. But anyway, uh, you might be surprised to know that Thanksgiving is one of their favorite holidays. You know, they might not be eating turkey and pumpkin pie like we usually do, but they want to celebrate and give thanks for the many opportunities they have in this country uh, for their safety, for the education that's provided for their children, uh, for the job they have so they can support their own family. They really are grateful and they're so grateful because they had to sacrifice. They had to sacrifice, they had to survive danger, make difficult trips just to get here to the United States. They really uh, are wonderful, wonderful people. Um, I want to tell you a little more now about the citizenship class itself. Uh, we uh, have four classes, as I said, and during the class, they have to learn everything in a second language, which makes it very, very difficult. Um, they have to memorize 100 civics and history questions in English. Can you imagine learning 100 questions in Chinese or Russian? <laughs> I certainly can't. But uh, the re citizenship requires them to be able to read and write in English pass the civics and history test, and also understand and be able to speak English. That's one of the hardest parts. So during each class, we work on helping the student acquire this knowledge so they can pass the test. And it, it really takes a lot of review and repetition uh, because to do all this in a second language. Now we do have some wonderful volunteers who come and help us also to prepare the students to take the test. They, by individually calling out the student and checking their knowledge individually, and then also role-playing so that uh, they know what the experience in Chicago is going to be like. You know, our students are really busy people. They have families and they have jobs, and yet they come to take on this challenge of studying and their efforts pay off because most of them are successful and become citizens. And they're so happy and so proud when they do, when they accomplish this. And when they return to class to tell us about their experience, uh, it is wonderful. They tell the class, you can do it. Come on, keep studying. And then that gives the rest of the students new energy and new courage to continue working. And then we you know, congratulate them and all celebrate together. Now, 
just one last aspect that I'd like to talk about with regard to our ministry is uh, we advocate for just immigration policies. I think most people realize that our system is broken. These policies don't meet our needs in the United States, much less those people who desperately are seeking a better life, free from violence and free from poverty. You know, Pope Francis in his apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et exaltate, rejoice and be glad, insists that the challenge of working with immigrants and refugees is a primary issue, saying that Christians should, quoting, stand in the shoes of these brothers and sisters of ours who risk their lives to offer a better future to their children. And Catholic social teaching calls us to do more than just respond to people's immediate needs but to also work for policies that treat the immigrant fairly, you know, that prevent family separations, that provides the path to citizenship and uh, addresses the factors that compelled the people to leave their countries in the first place. Now, these are really complicated issues to resolve, we know, but we do what we can to promote justice for immigrants. And as we often tell our tutors and coworkers, we can't do everything, but still, we can do something. When I moved to the United States, I only knew a few words of English. When I moved here, I couldn't talk with my children's friends and their parents. I came as a refugee from Burma with my husband and my three children. When I was in Iraq, I loved having many friends and being independent. At the Dominican Literacy Center, it is our mission to provide opportunities for immigrant women to receive individual tutoring in reading, writing, and speaking English as a second language. The women who come to us are from many countries, and they are all put on a path to a successful life in their new country. Learning English language skills helps these women to become informed mothers, confident workers, and full participants in life here in the United States. Here at the Dominican Literacy Center, we also assist women and men who are studying to take the naturalization test. As a nonprofit, we are blessed to be able to provide all of these opportunities through individual tutoring by trained volunteers within the neighborhood setting. All tutors receive 14 hours of training and ongoing support from the Dominican Literacy Center staff. We believe in empowerment through education and the dignity of each individual who walks through our doors. We are here to provide hope. Now I feel comfortable talking to my children's friends and their parents. I can have conversations with people in English and Spanish. I am studying now to become U.S. citizen. Now that I speak English, I finally feel independent and have friends again. Thank you. Thank you. 감사합니다. 축하. Gracias. See you tomorrow. Thank you for giving me hope. My name is Sister Kathleen Ryan, and um, as you've heard before, Sister Jane and I work with the immigrant community in the Aurora area. 
We hope that by the end of this small presentation that you'll know a little bit more about our ministry here, which is part of our Dominican mission. I was born in Chicago, Illinois, and I have two younger brothers. I entered the Springfield Dominicans after high school. I had no way of knowing then how enriched my life was going to be throughout the coming years. My first assignment was to teach first grade and I had 45 students in my room. That's when I really learned how to break down a difficult learning task into small, easy steps. I continued teaching in all the grades and then was principal at two Catholic elementary schools. And on so many levels, I loved it. But the work I'm doing now is the best yet. This ministry with the immigrant community began not when I was praying, or contemplating or meditating. But when I was watching TV one snowy Sunday morning in February, 1993. The Sunday morning show with Charles Corral featured an eight minute piece about two sisters of mercy who were starting a literacy center and a tutoring center for uh, women in Bridgeport, Connecticut. When I saw that piece, I loved the idea and started to talk about it. And with the support of my Springfield Dominican sisters, began in September, 1993 in a borrowed space in the basement of St. Nicholas Church. That program began with just a few women who wanted to learn English. And as of last year, we had 205 students studying English every week with 187 generous volunteer tutors who really want their students to learn to read, write, and speak English. Now there are seven of us on staff and two of those staff members are our former students. Sister Jane told you about another part of our program that helps immigrant men and women learn American history, US civics, and basic English. Sometimes there's a crossover between the two programs. Women studying citizenship come over for individual ESL tutoring, and women in our tutoring program go to our citizenship classes. There's a seamless sharing between those two programs. Also, we live in community with four sisters in the same area in Aurora where many of our students actually live. That helps us not to forget how difficult life is for immigrants in the United States. Our students live in tiny apartments or in trailers or rented rooms or in small starter homes. Many of them do not have a washer or dryer and use the laundromat. And sometimes we see in the dead of winter, we see women carrying their basket of clothes over to the laundromat uh, on icy roads and slippery sidewalks. And we remember, oh yes, here's one, another small hard thing that these people are going through. Many of our immigrant students have several minimum wage jobs. And they do things like deliver our morning newspapers, clean nursing homes, or work in factories doing assembly work. One of my current students has three jobs, three children, and is a single mother. And she still wants to learn English. It's not an easy time right now to be an immigrant. There's always the fear of having someone you love deported. And it's not an easy time right now to work with immigrants. Sometimes people think we're just wasting our time. But that doesn't really matter. And we're fortunate to be working with and receiving support from many wonderful, generous people who really want our country to be the land of the free and the hope of the brave. 
They really want to extend a helping hand to new immigrants in any way that they can. As Jane said, we see our work as privilege. It's a privilege to be with women and men who work so hard for a better life. We enrich their lives, but they enrich our lives. I just have a question with the sign of the times right now. Uh, Kathleen at Bethany House talked to us uh, the other day and um, how protective they are when they a staff member answers the door uh, in case it might be someone who is of ill intent. So when the uh, immigrants come to study, do you ever have that situation that um, they're worried or afraid that somebody's gonna come and get them at the center? Um, we, for the, especially for the last four years, but even, in, even before that, we've done a lot talking to people about their personal security and their rights and telling them what to do if they're stopped by ICE, if ICE comes to their homes um, and all of that, because we have had the ICE um, immigration, women and men coming uh, to Aurora quite a bit. We also keep our back door locked at all times. We used to keep it open, but we don't keep it locked anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we're very lucky because we're on church property. And although we're not affiliated uh, with the parish, except by bonds of friendship and support, it does give, I think it would give um, people of, like you said, Denise, ill intent a pause before they would start to um, break in. We, I think the women see our center as a safe place. Yes. That's what I was gonna mm -hmm. add. They really do feel safe here. Yeah. Um, so, and that's wonderful. And Elisa and Maria and all of us on staff, all seven of us, uh, we know what to do when the doorbell rings. Elisa and Maria, especially, cause they answer the door a lot. They look through the window they will not, even though there's a screen door, they will not let anybody, they will not open the door because they know that they can always, people can always slide a message under the door. Um, they can, even if they're from ICE, they can slide a paper under the door, but they also know it has to be signed for a particular person and by a particular judge. And without that, um, even if it's a work order, because uh, we know that ICE has been sliding work orders under the doors, that is not enough to open the door. So we, we've kind of, over the past four years, especially, we've kind of absorbed all those safety features. And I think we do them reflexively. Great. So that you would probably have a sense of, um... Oh, Aaron has a question. Mm -hmm. What gives you the most joy about the work you do with the immigrant community? I spoke a little bit about that. I think uh, just the joy is that they're such good people and they're so happy that we want to help them. Uh, and so it's, it's really gratifying and inspiring to be with them. Uh, <laughs> I can't say enough what good people they are and so, it's, it's a joy to work with them, to go to work every day with wonderful people <laughs> who are a very appreciative. Uh, I might add, I taught high school for 15 years. It wasn't <laughs> always that way. <laughs> so it's really a joy to be with people who are appreciative and uh, are, are thankful for what you do. <laughs> so that would be my, my response. And like I said, they're an inspiration to me. They teach me uh, to, you know, not take things for granted, to really appreciate uh, what we have here, ordinary things, and really the not so ordinary things that we each have in our life here in the United States, because they didn't have it. And mm -hmm. their appreciation for that uh, is inspiring and, and a joy. 
I think what gives me the most satisfaction is getting to know these women personally and seeing them as persons and not just a group of immigrants um, or even immigrants from Guatemala, immigrants from Mexico, immigrants from South Korea. Um, we really are privileged to get to know these people as people, as women, as adult women. And it makes me happy to see that our tutors are the same. And it's very gratifying when uh, one of the tutors will say, oh, you know, last week I had lunch with my former student, Maria, and we went over to Red Robin or wherever they went. And yeah, we see each other about once a month, we call. And that wasn't an original goal of the program, <laughs> but, um, it's a wonderful thing that has happened, both for the uh, women, the, the students, but also it's really wonderful for the tutors to really know this group that's being um, vilified in the press, to really be, and we teach our tutors to, to be able to say, if somebody is spouting off about um, immigrants, to not argue, to just say, Yes, I can understand that that's your opinion, but do you have time to hear my experience with my student, Juana? And then they can talk about it from a different perspective, a different uh, standing in, in different shoes than the person who is uh, really against immigrants. So I think um, that bringing down the barriers of stereotyping and um, racism amongst the American people and ourselves is a, it's, it's a very big satisfaction to me. The good that's come out of that is amazing. So um, we thank you for that. And it, again, the vocation of Springfield Dominican life for you two has now evolved into another boat of God's mission uh, with the immigrants. So, you know, it's, it's certainly gospel and I appreciate you doing this during Vocation Awareness Week. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Denise. <laughs> Thank That's you. so nice. <laughs> you keep up your good work. Yeah, life. exactly. Don't give up now. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not you at all. No, not at all. Thank All right, you. thank you. All Bye. right, we'll see you. Bye. 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 Thank you.